That's like torture. I know they're like, <laughs> How deep is it right there? And it's a rock bottom. Six. Too many of us right next to one little hole. Right. And how I'm gonna angle my hole is have it going out like this so that I can cover multiple depths in the same hole. I'll fuck with that. I've covered right. it. What is going on everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of Fish and Grubs. We are out here, first ice. We are in Maine, we drove like five and a half hours north. We're on this small pond here. And today we're gonna be trying to sight fish brook trout. So something that we've never done in our lives. Uh, we're gonna be at attempting it today and we're gonna see what we can do. We're gonna be using only jigging rods. We're not putting any traps out and uh, that's pretty much that. Um, apparently we're gonna be using some small little crankbaits to call the fish in and then we're gonna be using uh, little tungsten jigs or spoons to hook them. But it is five freaking degrees out. Maybe even less than that. It was like two when we got here. I, I assume it's warming up a little bit now that the sun's coming up. But you got the crew. We got the crew. Should be a really good day. Guys, do me a favor. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell as well. We're dropping videos every single weekday. And if we hit 5K for January 1st, we're going to be giving away a reel of your choice under $300. Any reel could be any brand, as long as it's under 300 bucks. Let's do this. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fish and Grubs. You're asking yourself, why the heck did we just go from this to the office? Well, let me tell you. All right, folks. Today's episode is not what we wanted it to be. In fact, we thought with the trips we had planned, that we were gonna have two epic ice fishing videos and I thought I was going to record a one year review on the Helix 7 all season package. None of that happened. Instead, we're gonna be talking about the 10 massive mistakes we made going for our first fish on the ice for the 2020-21 season. Let's first start off with day one. Our first massive mistake was driving five and a half hours up to Maine when we had ice here in New Hampshire. We did not know about it yet. In fact, we didn't hear about it until the moment we got off the ice. What we did do is we did do some really cool stuff. Our buddy Riley taught us how to cut sight holes, which I do believe you cannot do in New Hampshire, but up in Maine, we were able to do that. So we cut these big sight holes. He talked all about it. We have some great footage of that. And here comes the fun part. Freaking using that chisel right there to cut a big giant square in the ice here. Nuts. Absolutely bonkers. And what's cool now is that it's gonna take about maybe two or three strikes and this thing will be broken off. There we there go. It is. And then this comes up. Just move it. Yo! That's so cool. Look at it go. Look at it go. But really, we should have gone to our honey hole. So that brings me to our massive mistake number two. Instead of doing what you should do on your first ice fishing trip of the season, going out to a place you know and targeting species that you know how to fish. We targeted a species that we had never targeted before. Now I've caught them through the ice pretty much accidentally while targeting other fish, but I've never actually gone to 
target brook trout. We also went to a pond that only had brook trout in it. Now, although Riley's done this before, he had never been to this pond, so that adds on to the mistake. Um, you know, we ended up driving five and a half hours to fish a new pond for him and a new pond for us, and that spelled for disaster for that day. I've never been skunked my first day of ice fishing, and we got skunked. Now, Riley did get one. This is one of his specialties, so he was able to move around and find the fish. And then actually ended up getting one more after we moved to this area. Oh, 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 oh my god, oh. dude! Oh, oh, oh yes, I am filming. Epic. That is so sick. All right. Oh, that's cold. Yeah, that is a beaut, bro. Yo. But then Becca and I fished for hours. I'm talking hours. I had, I was jigging two jigs at the same time, and um, we didn't even get a sniff after that. And he was there for the rest of the night after we left and he didn't catch another fish. So the place that we went to was super slow. I know Riley ended up going back the very next day and only catching, I think, two more being there pretty much all day. The other big mistake we made that day was staying at that pond. If it's super slow and you actually really, really want to catch fish the way Becca and I do, we should have begged Riley to leave that pond and go to another pond so that we could at least get uh, some good content and a good video for you guys. You know, if you're not making YouTube videos and you're only out there to catch one fish and that's good for you, that's great. But for Becca and I, we want content. We want to entertain you guys and we have a whole lot of footage of literally nothing from the entire day. Like, I fell asleep in my chair. I never do that when I'm fishing. It was extremely slow and it wasn't like we could move out to the deep and target some perch or go after some bluegill. All that was there with trout. So we just spent time sitting in like two, three foot of water and it was, it's just not what I'm used to. We didn't mark a damn thing. I ended up putting the fish finder in. You know, I even for a small amount of time jumped around the whole pond and was jigging for them and I actually marked two fish in two different holes. They were staring at my lure, moving super slow, staring at my lure for a good amount of time. I have no idea what the fish was. From what I understand, there were only brook trout in there and maybe a couple pickerel, but it, they, they wanted nothing to do with my little tungsten jig tipped with a mealworm. And both of the fish that Riley got were on tungsten jigs tipped with a soft plastic, I believe, from Frostbite. So those were the big mistakes for day one. Whew, that sucked. Boy Riley caught uh, two fish. We got, actually got to see one of them. Becca and I, we got skunked. So hopefully we see you tomorrow back on the ice. Hopefully catching fish. We do not have a solid plan yet. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fishing Rubs. This is a weird, wacky way to start a video, but yesterday we had first ice. Yesterday absolutely sucked. We drove five and a half hours up to Maine and both Becca and I caught D-I-C-K. Nada. So, we're restarting the video. We're starting it from right now. We drove four hours south where we actually found out yesterday, right when we got off the ice, that there's safe ice. So today we're going to a pond that is loaded. It is my absolute favorite pond to ice fish, or one of them I should say. And it has everything you could possibly imagine, except for smallmouth. So, we're going there today and hopefully we crush it. Becca, what do you think? I'm thirsty. 
<laughs> Becca's just waking up. I am too, but I took a shower, so I'm a little more, more, a little bit more awake. I'm gonna go get the car cleaned off, and we're gonna do this. Let's go, guys. I forgot to mention today is uh, like the first major snowstorm of the year, so we're gonna be fishing an extremely low pressure system, and it's gonna be like snowing all freaking day. I live for this shit. Let's go. Holy crap, folks. We made it. We're here. We got our first hole drilled. We got all the gear down here. The Mr. Buddy heater flex thing is not working. Uh, I think it got some snow on it. I don't even know. I, I can't smell any propane as I'm trying to get it to work. But, we got our first hole drilled, and uh, we're gonna get some shiners down, and we're gonna see if we can't catch some damn fish. After yesterday, all we care about is catching a fish. I don't care if it's a pickerel, I don't care if it's a shiner, we just wanna catch a fish. Let's do this. Well, obviously things did not go as planned, as you guys already have guessed. We have 10 mistakes on the day, and so far we've only gone over three of them. <sighs> so, the mistakes for day two are a lot more intense than day one. Day one's mistakes are kind of like, you know, things that we could have lucked out and gotten past them. Whereas day two, we really made a ton of big mistakes. So, mistake number four, if you can't tell already, it is a disaster out. And just getting out onto the ice took a ton of effort. The place we went to has a big giant hill um, that goes down to the parking lot. We parked at the top of the hill so that we didn't get stuck trying to get out on the way out. And even going downhill with all of our gear was tough. And the mistake we made was trusting the weather forecast. Now, what the guys were saying was that it was supposed to be eight to 16 inches of snow by the end of it. By the time we got to the pond and got down to the launch, there was easily 16 inches of snow in a lot of areas. We got to the pond at 6.15 in the morning, and by that time there was easily 16 inches of snow in some areas. That was a giant mistake trusting the weather guys if we knew how much snow we were really going to get up there that day we might have just gone home collected ourselves and gone out today the day i'm making this video and we would have had a much better time um, instead all my stuff is soaked still it, it's it was a disaster guys <sighs> Just frozen, broken, everything is just covered. So because we trust the weather forecast and we thought, hey, we could still make it out, if we get eight inches of snow, that's absolutely nothing. I've fished in severe conditions before, so I did not think it was going to be like this. Now, we also don't have like an ATV, plus it's the beginning of the season, so you can't really use an ATV on only four inches of ice. But the big issue with mistake number four, trusting this weather forecast, is by the time we were trying to leave, there were snow drifts that were way up past my knee, and we were in over two foot of snow. The eight to 16 inches was bullshit, at least for this area, and uh, it made getting out of there at 10, now this was 10 a.m. when we were getting out of there and it was still coming down like crazy. It made getting out of there a huge mess. Now, not only because of the snow being packed up so high and making it so hard to trek through, but because of the other mistakes that we made, it made it even harder to get our gear and get the heck out do. of there. I am I super glad we left when we that. did, even though we would have caught way more fish had we made moves on the pond and stayed. My question is, is would we have ever been able to get all of our gear and get off the pond that day? That's the big issue. 
on to mistake number five. We brought way too much freaking gear for being in a blizzard. That was a huge mistake on our parts. And I should have limited us, but because we figured it was gonna only be eight to 16 inches, we just packed everything in and then we just went for it. And by the time we got down to the bottom of the hill and got on the ice and we were really working against the snow, it was extremely difficult to even move forward. Like I was slipping like crazy. In fact, we had to do multiple trips just to get our gear out to the spot we finally decided to stop at. But we brought everything. We brought the kitchen sink for crying out loud. We had food to cook. We had over the amount of tip-ups we needed. We had so many freaking shiners. We got a dozen jumbos, three dozen large, and over a dozen, probably two dozen little pinfish to put on our jigs. We went ham when it came to bait. We went ham when it came to everything. We had too many rods with us, too many tip-ups. We had two sleds. We had Becca's giant tent, which weighs a ton. When if we had planned correctly, we would have just brought mine. My pop-up tent, which would have been the tent slash a sled together with most of the gear in it, we left that back at home because we didn't foresee all of this happening. We brought the big Mr. Buddy that we just got Becca and they sent her the Mr. Buddy flex cooker thing and we brought that as well. Didn't need it, shouldn't have brought it. All of this was just extra weight. I should have brought one rod out with me. Instead I brought my whole rod locker. We brought a little cast iron skillet to cook the food on. We brought a bunch of drinks, a huge thing of water, I mean, we could have limited the amount of stuff we brought by a ton, by a ton. And it would have made trekking out there and trekking back a lot easier in this blizzard. We way overpacked and that was a giant mistake that we made, especially once we get further on into the mistakes. Having all that stuff, once I made another really big mistake, and that was all me. Once that happened, it was just, it made everything way even more so we had more snow on the ground when we were leaving plus it weighed double some some of the things triple what they weighed when we brought them out number six as you heard me say when we finally got out on the ice and was getting everything set up one of the big mistakes we made was not covering up the heater this mr buddy flex super flex heater um, got a bunch of snow in it because it was a freaking blizzard and by the time we got the shelter set up and everything in the shelter and tried to get the heater going, it was covered in snow. The whole heater part. I couldn't even get the flame to light so it wouldn't start. And we tried a ton. We even tried plugging the Mr. Buddy heater like cooker thing in and getting that to start, but that wouldn't start either. Becca even took the heater up to the car and I'm not, I'm gonna add this into number six, but Becca took the heater back to the car, turned the car on, got it nice and warm, melted all the snow, got the heater turned on, and then on her way back to bring it out, she was trying to get back to the shelter as fast as possible, so she started running through the super thick snow, and she fell, and filled the heater with snow again. So we're out there with no heat. Did you fall? What? Did you fall? Yeah. I ate shit. Well, that's not going to turn on then. No shit. Fuck. Mistake number seven. This combined with another mistake are two of the biggest mistakes we made on the day. Number seven, we set up camp before checking the depth or looking for fish with the fish finder that we had. So after I set up a bunch of traps, and got into the shelter and checked the depth, we were only sitting in 4.4 feet of water. And um, for jigging, for the fish that we were going for, that's not where we wanted to be. This place that we went to doesn't really get that deep, about maybe eight and a half foot, 
but we want it to be in the more six and a half to eight range. And if we had just hiked another maybe 50 yards, we would have been sitting right in the range that we should have been in to set up the shelter. But going back to number five, we had way too much gear. So by the time we even got as far out as we did, we were just like totally spent and we were just saying, let's get things set up right here. And because it was still dark when we got out there, because that's what I like to do, I like to set up in the dark, we just set up the tent first, got everything in the tent, drilled the tent in, and um, kind of made our permanent home before we even knew where we were sitting. And that is a huge mistake, guys. When you're setting up camp, you need to know the depth you're sitting in. So even if you've been to the pond before and you think you're in the right depth, you might want to drill a hole and check and make sure you're sitting where you want to be sitting before you go ahead and set up camp. That was a giant freaking mistake. And one of the biggest mistakes made on the day. Mistake number eight. When I set up the tip ups, I, set, I spread them out as I normally would. And um, I put out six. Now we could have had 10 between the two of us. I put out six. And honestly, in the conditions that I didn't really realize were as tough as they were, that was really stupid of me, especially spreading them out as wide as I did and putting out as many as I did. I should have put up like three tip-ups and had them all really close to camp because spreading them out the way I did every time I had to go check a flag, which was only a couple times, and they were wind flags, it was just a treacherous walk through the snow. And as the day progressed, it just built up more and more and more. In fact, I had one flag go off that I didn't even know went off because there was so much snow on top of the trap that the flag only went up about that much. And so it was like sitting up off where it was supposed to be and the fish was gone and the bait was gone. And that's just, that's just what happens when you make dumb decisions. I also should have only used certain type of tip-ups um, in that snow the ones that would have gone off anyways. And that, I mean, it was just mistake after mistake after mistake. If we did things right, we would have set up another 50 yards out, put up like two or three traps right around the hut and just strictly been there to jig and only brought those few traps and only brought a couple jigging rods and just left a ton of gear in the car. But you live and learn, right? This brings me to mistake number nine, which is the biggest mistake I made on the day, and this was all my fault. Before we set up the camp, I took a shovel and I shoveled out the entire area that I wanted to put the shelter. Put the shelter down, got all set up, went out, did the tip up thing. After I figured that, you know, things were good and settled and ready to go and I wanted to get into the shelter, Becca was still away trying to get that heater working. I went into the shelter. Meanwhile, all of our stuff is in the shelter and on the ice, most of it. Some of it was off the ice, but most of it was just sitting on the ice. So a lot of the things that you would normally just put right on the ice or on the snow. I got all excited. I took the ice auger, I brought it inside the shelter, and I drilled two holes, one for me, one for Becca. Because of all the fresh snowfall on only four inches of snow, I don't know if you've ever been out there and done something like this before. When there is a ton of snow, especially on ice that is still kind of thin, basically what happens is the, the pressure of all the snow coming down on the ice is pushing the ice down. And when you drill holes, water comes up. Within seconds, the entire shelter was filled with two inches of water. 
It was like literally up over the tops of my boots immediately. Everything we had on the ground was soaked. We were trekking, I was trekking through all the water. I'm trying to gather everything up off the ground because it's all just getting soaked. I left my rod locker too the entire time, even like after I cleaned up everything, I left my little rod locker that's filled with styrofoam sitting on the ice like this way. The whole bottom of it where the water was filled and then after I took it out, when we were trying to trek out of there, it froze and that thing was super heavy. So everything that was on the ground when I did this got absolutely soaked. My bibs on the bottom, every time I like stepped outside, all the snow like, was caking on and freezing because I had water on my bibs. So everything like by the time I, I left there, my boots it's and so my ridiculous. bibs had connected because of all I the icy even. water and snow building up I have so much over and over and over again. It formed like this giant layer. The whole front of my bibs were frozen and it was a freaking mess. I could put, keep putting like mistake number 11, 12, 13 on just this one because of all the bad things that happened with that one mistake. After a while, because I was out there for a little bit. Becca got back. We were trying to decide whether or not we wanted to move the shelter or to leave. And we were sitting in there together and all of a sudden we started hearing cracking under the ice underneath us. Now we were on four inches of ice, but yeah, we had two inches of water on top of that four inches of ice, which one, the water's heavy. Two, the water is warmer than the ice and it's coming up from the pond and the top layer of ice was probably just getting thinner and thinner and thinner and that was we were compromised at that point and once we heard that cracking we were like we need to make a move we need to make a move right now you are not alone there yeah. creeping nice. me out just because of all the water in here that it's just way too fucking sketchy I don't know what to do. We are so lucky that we got all of our stuff and got the hell out of there. Now, if we had made a move, I think we would have even more mistakes. Instead, we decided to leave. And that brings me to mistake number 10. As we're getting ready to leave and getting everything out of the shelter, because the ice and the water were just like all over the place. I couldn't distinguish where the holes were that we drilled because there was so much water in the tent. And as I'm trying to gather up all of our gear and get the hell out of there, my foot went all the way through the hole and I fell straight down into the giant puddle of water. My arm was completely soaked. And then when I got myself up and out, going back and forth to the car with all of our gear, which took, I believe, four or five trips because everything was so heavy from the water and the snow was so high, we had to like limit the, the amount that we were bringing in one trip to smaller amounts instead of just taking as much as we could at once because it was absolutely ridiculous and we just couldn't handle it. My arm was can't, frozen can't solid. Even. It actually took both Becca and I to get my hoodie off of me when we finally finished and packed the budge. car and we're ready uh, to go. Oh yeah, it's like because Play -Doh. it was fr <laughs> like frozen, frozen stiff. Really strong. Like, Play -Doh. It looked like like Ugh. it moved a touch. It was like kind of like super hard Play-Doh or something. Some sort yeah. of like magic substance. Yeah, it's freaking believable, folks. It was freaking insane, guys. Absolutely insane. I hope you guys learn from this. I know I learned a ton from this, and these are mistakes that I would not do again. You know, if I'm going out in a blizzard, I'm bringing minimal gear, small, minimal gear, so that it's easy to get out, easy to get off the ice, 
We're only going to be jigging maybe a couple tip-ups. We're not going to bring a shitload of shiners. There are so many things, like dry food, nothing heavy and wet. Like, everything needs to be thought about precisely before going out in the conditions that we went out in. And those are some huge, huge, huge mistakes that could have been avoided, and we could have still had a great day out on the ice there if we did things correctly. Another thing, because of all that water on the bottom, when I broke down her giant ice shack and pulled it away from that sketchy area, and I went to lift that thing up, it weighed four times the amount that it should weigh. Becca, we worked so hard to get all of our stuff back to the car. It took us, I think, four, four trips to get all of our stuff back because everything was soaked and frozen at the same time. So it added a ton of extra weight. I had to literally go back at the very end. Becca's asthma was acting up because we did so many trips back and forth. She was like, I can't do it. Just leave the shelter. It's a I don't know how expensive her shelter is, but it's a really nice, big, like four or five person clam ice shelter. And she wanted me to leave it on the ice, which I refused to do. I got my freaking shit together and I went right back out there. I put that thing on the sled by itself and I took like five steps at a time. And it took me probably 40 minutes to get maybe a seven minute walk back to the car. This was without a doubt the worst opening day of ice fishing for me I've ever had. Every single time I go out for first ice, I have absolutely killed it. You guys can go back and look at the old videos. I have never had a bad first day on the ice. These were two terrible first days because of things that could have been avoided, huge mistakes made by us, and um, you know, I take full responsibility for that because ice fishing is my thing. It's why, like we started this channel because of ice fishing and I feel like such a freaking dumbass for doing all of these things but you know you get excited and you want to get out on first ice and then you know the snowstorm's coming and you're like well this is all this is the time we have so let's go let's go let's go let's go and let's do it anyways and we just went instead of preparing and doing what we should have done before going out there and um, you know like that's just something I won't do ever again we will be way more prepared next time and um next time we're gonna get some revenge like we need redemption for this day all right guys so there are a couple things that we did right a few things i think i, I got six things on here that we did correctly these two terrible days number one and my favorite thing of all the things is that amongst all this freaking chaos, while Becca and I were trying to talk about what the hell to do, she was saying that we were like, I'm like, we shouldn't have put this many flags out, blah, blah, blah. She was like, yeah, I mean, you're not even gonna see the flags go off. We looked down and the flag that she said we would never see go off because of the type of flag it is, was up and it was spinning. And I set the hook and this is what happened. Are gonna be able to go off. That one oh, is up. God, get him. And it's a fish. First fish on the ice. 2020. It's gonna be a fucking tiny pickerel. Ready? My God! It's a fucking bass. Oh my God, guys! <laughs> oh my God! Can I touch it? Oh my God! I forgot what they look like, bro. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, you have no idea how much I love you. Oh my God! <laughs> That's fucking insane. Oh my God! Right in the snoot. 
right in the snoot. Oh man, there's giants in here too, guys. That is epic. All right, little bro, you have no idea how much I love you. So we caught one bass and that was like it. Like that was the highlight of the whole trip. I think for both of us, like even though I caught it, Becca still kind of caught it too. Like we were there together when it happened. It was freaking phenomenal. I was like hugging and kissing this fish and freaking out. Um, the photo that we got, it was epic just because of all the freaking crazy snow. You can't even see the background because it was just a whiteout condition. And um, you know, that's, in my opinion, the number one thing we did right was put that trap where it was. That was the first trap we set on the day, as you guys can see. First shiner of the year, folks. And uh, I'm pumped, I'm pumped we got a fish because after all the shit we had been through, and we were about to pack up and leave, getting that one fish sure did put smiles on our faces. Number two, and probably more important than the bass, but obviously didn't put the smile on my face the bass did, we got out of there in time. If we had stayed any longer, like even another hour or two, that snow wasn't supposed to stop until four o'clock, and while we were driving, it did not stop. Like, it was coming down hard the whole time. The wind was blowing towards the launch, which is where we had to go. And it was all coming, like, literally straight at us from across the pond. The snow drifts were two foot plus of snow. It was absolutely ridiculous. And if we would stayed longer, those snow drifts would have just been bigger and we would have had more to trek through and it would have just been tougher. Things would have been more frozen. It was a shit show to begin with trying to leave. So if we had stayed until darkness, the temperature drop, like forget about it. We did the right thing in my opinion and in Becca's opinion and we got the hell out of there when we did and that is huge. That is one of the best things we could have done. Another thing we did right was get all of our gear. Even though like, it was super tough, and both of us, I think, wanted to just leave everything and just leave. Um, we still managed to get all of the gear, including her 4,000 pound ice shelter that was just super waterlogged and then frozen. So it was ridiculously heavy. We managed to get all of it off the ice, into the car, and out of there. Even the trash, which, you know, like, I don't like littering, but there was part of me that wanted to just leave shit that we didn't need, and we took it, all of it. Number four, we made it home safe. We drove slow. We even drove slow when going out there, um, getting to the pond. We really took our time. Uh, every drive was way more than it should have been because the snowstorm was really intense and you know when you're out there and you're going out in these conditions do not get excited and drive 100 miles an hour unless you know you're in a snowmobile maybe uh take it easy drive safe be safe and that's something we did do right number five one of the things we're doing right is this video right here honestly i didn't even want to make a video but you guys should know that we make mistakes so that you can learn from them as well as us learning from them just being there. So because of all the shit that went down, I hope that some of you guys, especially you guys new to ice fishing and those guys that have been out there for years, learn a little something from the crap that we went through in this day. Number six, by the time we got off the ice, we gave each other a huge hug and we were excited to be leaving and we left with smiles on our faces and we left with redemption in our hearts ready to get back out there we didn't just like leave miserable meh and like oh we're never going ice fishing again no we left there talking about the next time we're going out talking about how we're going to do things better and making what was a absolute garbage situation into a positive one and that folks is 
huge. No one's gonna believe us what just happened. <laughs> I have it all on video. <laughs> you know, when you go through shit, when you're out there fishing, and you just complain about it and you turn it to a freaking little baby, that doesn't do anything. It does nothing. Now, in the moment, sometimes, I mean, I'm guilty of it. I can get really upset. But when you're on your way home and you're looking back on it, you gotta pick out the good parts. You can't just dwell on all the shit you went through. You gotta learn from the shit you went through and try and make good of it. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry that this isn't the ice fishing episode that I wanted it to be. I'm sure you guys wanted to see more like awesome action fishing and all that. I promise you, that is coming. Any days off that I do get, we're gonna try and get out there and get redemption. So I thank you guys so much for all the support you're giving the channel. The growth has been incredible. The amount of people pouring in and sharing these videos and being a part of this, it blows my mind. I can't thank you guys enough for that. You guys all know about the giveaway when we hit 5K, so please do me a favor. Share this video, share any of the other videos that you love, share some of the old ice fishing videos because uh, they're coming, guys. We're gonna get out there and we're gonna hammer some fish and I cannot freaking wait for it. Thanks for tuning in. You guys freaking rock. And we'll see you tomorrow. Fish out. Put us on. Jump in the jump for the shit. I'll tap when I speak. I'll cap with the speech till they cut up in the rapture. I'm so out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break. Been a long day. Hit your line with your fog group with the light sticks. Maybe help me spark the ideas. We got nowhere else to go. It's only up from there. I've been on my own. Just running through the field. Say, vivid for the ears. I know that's how they like. Bye, buddy. It was nice dying with you. <laughs>